What'd you say? Oh, uh, I didn't say anything. No, I'm pretty sure I heard you say soon, but in demon. <laughs> no, um, uh, I said, I said zoom because of all the, uh, zooms we have in our videos. <laughs> <laughs> Are you making fun of the editing? <laughs> Don't do that. They hear everything. Sorry. What? No. Oh, so you're making fun of Ted then. Who the fuck is Ted? Sup. What's happening? The Maverick, you gonna talk about Persona? Yeah. Today, I wanna talk about Persona. Specifically, the reason why you should play the series. You know what? Not just today, I want to talk about it for the whole month. <laughs> Persona is my favorite game series, so I really want to talk about it as much as I can, and the release of Persona 5 Royal is a good excuse. So let me try and explain why I love Persona so much, and why I think it's so special. Let's get started. Persona is a series that started in 1996 with the game titled Revelations Persona, which was, at the time, a dungeon crawler RPG. This series was birthed as a spin-off series of the Megami Tensei franchise, internationally known as Shin Megami Tensei, which is developed by Atlas. Each Persona game is a standalone story, meaning that you don't have to play any previous title to understand what's going on, even if some titles have reoccurring elements. This fairly simple series has turned into a dungeon crawling, turn based, monster collecting RPG that is also a calendar based social sim now with stealth mechanics. <sighs> but look, that's a lot, but what matters is this. Persona is badass, emotional, relevant, diverse, nuanced, and so, so much more. So if you're into video games, or even if you're not, stick around for a little bit and allow me to explain why I think the Persona series is a modern classic that should be experienced. First off, Persona is a turn-based RPG, but don't be deceived by that classification if you're someone that likes a more fast-paced combat system. Persona is more than just your typical turn-based RPG and contains many different gimmicks that change up the formula. Much like in its beginnings, Persona is still a dungeon crawler, but Persona initially differentiated itself due to its monster collecting mechanics. A lot of people relate it to Pokemon due to this fact, however, not only can you collect them, but you can also fuse them in many different ways to get more powerful Personas. Another gimmick that is carried over into each game is one in which the game encourages weakness exploitation. This means that if you hit an enemy with its weakness, you gain an extra turn in battle. This sounds simple, but it makes the battles a constant back and forth to discover new weaknesses, exploit the ones you know, and try to get an all-out attack, which is basically an instant kill attack that occurs once all enemy weaknesses have been exploited. Weakness exploitation also works very well with the Persona Fusion system, as it is always a great idea to have a diverse set of Personas on hand. Persona 5 also brought back a gimmick from Persona 1 and 2 in which you can negotiate with enemies in order to receive items, money, or even get them to join you as Personas themselves. But you've got to know the right things to say. <laughs> Sod it. The combat and dungeon elements end up working very well together in that each element supports the other. It doesn't feel as if certain aspects are out of place in the titles, and while some of them have weird gimmicks such as not being able to control your party members in the base version of Persona 3, they also prove to be well integrated. If someone is strictly looking for a traditional turn-based RPG, you'll find that here, but it's now at such an advanced stage that I think anyone who's vaguely into RPGs will find it exciting. For someone new to Persona, one may notice several interesting things just from the cover. The art is striking, and while the covers are mostly just a peek at the game's cast of characters, the color choice is indicative of the central theme of each game. Persona 3 is doused in blue, indicating grief, death, and sadness, while 4 contains a stripe of yellow indicating caution, like that of caution tape draped at a crime scene. It also relates to deceit and the pursuit of truth. Finally, we have Persona 5 being drenched in red. 
red symbolizing power, control, and its counterpart, freedom. This motif isn't only central on the box art, but it's also used in the games as well. Well, with the exception of Persona 1 and 2, Persona 1 and 2 have interesting stories, uh, especially 2, but they don't have the same feeling as Persona 3 through 5. This mostly has to do with the fact that Persona 1 and 2 don't have the social elements or the calendar system that are contained within Persona 3 through 5. Perhaps that's why Atlas forgot about them? Release of Port of Eternal Punishment, Jesus Christ. This isn't to say that 1 and 2 aren't great. They are, even if they feel a bit aged. But for the sake of this discussion, I'll be referring to 3 through 5, because whether you like it or not, they're the new standard for Persona. But why does this matter? Because these games aren't just turn-based dungeon crawlers anymore. They're also in-depth studies of society, the psyche, interpersonal relationships, and they even delve into pressing social issues in a nuanced and complex way. Mostly the games tackle these large topics through two means, the main plot and the social links. The main plot usually takes place over an in-game year, which is denoted through an in-game calendar. That's right, you play every day! <laughs> you can even do daily activities that you can do in real life, such as taking on part-time jobs, going shopping, going fishing, playing video games, and even going to the bathroom. Check out this new skill! All of these activities really make you feel as if you're living the life of the main character. This life isn't all fun though, as each title thrusts you into a scenario where you must join together with a wide array of varied characters in order to tackle a larger threat. Whether that threat be the fact that there's an extra hour in the day where everyone but a select few stays asleep in coffins, or that there's a murderer throwing people into a TV dimension, or that you can change the minds of others through entering a physical manifestation of their perverse psyches. <laughs> I know, it's pretty wild. But surprisingly, all of these concepts work, and that largely has to do with the fact that these games are so damn cohesive. Every aspect of these games works towards the larger narrative, whether that be the color choice that I spoke of earlier, or the absolutely amazing music that fits the themes, such as how Persona 3 has rap and hip-hop music, or the fact that Persona 5 has jazz music. They all just feel so tightly knit and well thought out. It's hard to find a series this cohesive, and I think it's truly special. Speaking of cohesion, the social links help to bring these games together. These interactions are the social sim aspect of the experience, and besides the dungeon crawling, they make up a bulk of the experience. They're associated with the gameplay loop due to the fact that your social link rank with these individuals is directly associated with the power of the personas that you fuse, and they may even offer other benefits as well, depending on the title that you're playing. But while the gameplay enhancements are nice, it's the writing and diverse struggles that these characters are experiencing that is truly something special. Some of the topics that are discussed in these character interactions are dealing with terminal illness, gender in the workplace, struggling with one's sexuality, differences leading to isolation, child trauma, and much, much more. These interactions allow for the game to expand the themes that the main story is hitting on and go even deeper. It's surprising to see the depth at which these writers go to, to make each individual social link within each title feel as if they fit into a more cohesive whole and help to tell a larger story about society and the people within it. It's clear, Persona's pretty deep. It's gameplay and story play a game of tug of war, constantly vying for your attention and succeeding to both exhilarate from a gameplay perspective, but also give one pause. It's media that makes you think. Think more about society, those around you, and even yourself. It should be clear at this point that I love Persona, but even with its massive popularity now, I still don't think this series gets the attention that it deserves. I made this channel in order to dive deeper into RPGs, but also to try and tell a different story about these types of games. Gaming is something special, and while I acknowledge that it's not the same as film or even written work, I think gaming is something else. I think it can be something special, and I think that the Persona series is a series that rises to all that gaming can accomplish. So, what do you think? Are you thinking about playing Persona now, or have you already played it? Regardless, you should let me know in the comments what you think about Persona as a series, and you should recommend your favorite one to anybody else looking to start. I'm really looking forward to delving into Persona more this month, and I hope that you'll join me. To do that, you can subscribe, you can also like this video if you want, and you can follow me on my socials if you want. You can keep updated on any new videos that come out in the future from them. <laughs> Alright you guys, that was fun. You guys should get to know each other more. I'm gonna go snap in the corner. See you later! So, um...
What do you do for a living? Oh, well, um, you know, just a traveler. Mm, what exactly does that mean? Oh, well, you know, the usual. I go to every world, I see what's going on, I kill every motherfucker there and Oh, they're so just like I'm gonna do you in Maverick. <laughs> oh my god, Maverick? Can a man not snap in peace?